My name is Katia Mugens Tavaro. And uh, I happen to be Edgar Mugens Tavaro. We are the Tavaros. <laughs> I think Katya would be better. She has a better memory of better recollection of how, when, where, where yeah, we met her uh, exactly. She, <laughs> she, she, she has a full detail. Yeah, we we met at the gym somewhere at the gym. Um, I was busy working out, you know. I was so busy working out, like running seriously, and and tell how, tell them how you. He pretended to know me. Eh? I don't think I really pretended to know you because I didn't know you. I you she was on a treadmill, and uh, I think uh, she was doing eight, speed eight. It was ten, please. No, you, you increased to ten when I started speaking to you. <laughs> um, and she was next to my to my old schoolmate, a uh, person I'm going to school with. High school and uh, law school, and happens to be from my village. Eh? And uh, I saw this elegant, tall, nice looking lady called the mirrors, so I could see her reflection. But more importantly, I was seeing her rare, which I felt attracted to. <laughs> so uh, I had to come with a pickup line, uh, which was unconventional for me to open dialogue with her. So I asked my my old schoolmate, who's a lawyer, whether this was his wife. <laughs> so uh, my old schoolmate obviously knows I know his wife. <laughs> so he naturally reacted by. <laughs> and uh, when, uh, when the word wife came up, she as well <laughs> uh, had looked at me got back and increased her speed, uh, increased her speed to, I think, from 8 to 11 on the treadmill and she was yeah. really, really sweating it out. But, you know, if you're not a chipped gay or a sweeter chipped gay, you can only do as much with 11 on the treadmill. So she had to reduce. <laughs> now, as she reduced, she, she had find some breath and she obviously could speak so and, I continued and the dialogue. then yeah then you asked me my name my family where I come from I I, I couldn't imagine like you would know my parents so I told him ah, I'm from somewhere very far and then he said where exactly so I told him from Kabal because I looked at him and I'm like ah this one must be from Kampala so he can spoiled by from Kololo. Yeah. Who doesn't know anybody outside Kololo? I was trying to be polite. <laughs> so, so, um, and and I come from Kabale. He's like, which family? Then I tell him my parents, and he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. then he explains like my whole family tree, and now I was like scared. I'm like, okay. Maybe this is like an uncle of mine. <laughs> I need to be humble. <laughs> so now I was very humble. I reduced my speed. We started talking. Then he continued working out. I went and sat on the side, and uh, he came after and asked. I was waiting for my brother to pick me up and take me back home. He, he no, actually, you offered a lift, right? And no, I asked. I asked you whether whether I I, I could I, whether I could take you home. Yeah. And uh, and I asked you where you stay, and then he said I was staying in Nigeria that time, and then he said he stays in Nigeria. But no, I said I stay around there. You said you stay around there. Around Nigeria. that that route, yeah. I didn't say Nigeria. <laughs> no, I've but ne I've never the been, truth I've is, I've never been a fan of Nigeria. <laughs> And so I just said I stay around. But the around truth that is, route. he he wasn't staying in Nigeria. He was staying in uh, Bukoto. So, but I didn't know. So I said, okay. So I called my brother. I tell him, you know what? I've met someone who knows my family. His name is this and this. Um, he does this and this. He's going to take me home to drop me. He's like, okay, fine. So he dropped me home. I don't know why she accepted the stranger to give her a lift. 
you knew my whole family. But what is even surprising when I came to speak to her, she she looked at me, yes, and you know you've walked out. You obviously not smelling too good. Uh, although I think I had uh, a cologne for working out, but you know with sweat. So oh, many he was happened. so cool on that day. So I and she was speaking what she thought was a language I didn't understand. So she was telling her brother yeah. how she had met somebody who dropped her. And I think the brother asked her, do you trust that person? She said, yeah, he seems to know my family. I was following, but I, you know, people with my kind of looks and background are often thought to be too spoiled, as even to speak their own vernaculars. So I, I drove her to Niger. Um, I mean, I had, uh, had all the time <laughs> to inquire into what was critical at that point and get vital details about her. It's five years, um, it's five years and um, three, three months. Yeah, we, we know each other for five years but we've been married for for one year no so, <laughs> so, so. no we got married in 2018 so we only have four months to our second anniversary in yeah. marriage yeah oh on actually he proposed on the actual date we met on 14th may or in 2017 yeah and um, it was it was so nice i i like small things, I like small parties. So he took me away for a vacation to celebrate the day we met. And um, when we were there, he proposed, but he did not kneel. <laughs> he said this is a revolutionary, he can't kneel. <laughs> I mean, pretty obvious way. <laughs> Why would I talk on to cultures that are not Kneeling is for, you know, but I think it, it took her by complete surprise. Yeah. She, totally. she in the world of men, she didn't expect it I, to be. I never expected We were at a poolside it. and... Uh, at a private residence, somewhere very nice. Just the two of us and maybe people, you know, who are helping us. I thought we had just gone there to, you know, relax for the weekend and he popped the question. <laughs> no, but uh, not really. I mean, my sup I mean, what, what really, what really, what would I say? What, uh, what hit me is that uh, she, she was taken by surprise. Mm -hmm. Even when I thought the writing was uh, was on the wall, I'm not good at surprising. Mm -hmm. We, we revolutionaries have a way of doing things. Do things on, uh, at, so, but you know, I had to go place an order for a ring. So I wondered how I should put it on. Yeah. And she was swimming and I organized something on the poolside. There were roses, petals of roses. Yeah. And uh, she came and asked, where are these roses? So I told her the wind had blown them there. And she believed me. <laughs> she believed me. So I asked the waitress, I so I asked her them. what wine she would like to have. I, I don't drink. Uh, she, she, she likes fine wine. So as I ordered for water, uh, I asked the waitress to bring us, bring her red wine, and the red wine in the glass was the ring, and she didn't notice. So I asked her to take her, <laughs> to have her drink, cheers, but she was slow. I finished my water, she wasn't taking her. As she continued, because I was getting a little tense because she was delaying. Um. So I kept taking the wine, you know, taking my time. I was reading a book as I was taking some wine. Sipping, actually. Yeah, know. sipping. And no ladies they are being slow. You know, <laughs> in the days when I used to drink, I used to tank, not sip. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> For wine, you have to taste it, mm -hmm. you know. So I was sipping and reading a book and then 
finally when i was almost done i saw and i was like oh my god like i actually cried you know i have i, I never posted the pictures because i looked terrible <laughs> Yeah, but it was the sweetest thing. Edgar is not good at surprises. I always get him. Yeah. So this time he really you really surprised me. It was sweet. Oh she's uh one a maturity. She's uh her mental age is really really way 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 much older than her, her actual uh, what you'd call chronological age. Eh? Uh she's as well open minded. She, she, she's not prone to idiosyncrasies and uh, if you really look at her friends eh, from all walks of life really all walks of life then uh, she's modest she's modest and uh, she has a calming effect on me when 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 I'm losing my head and we engage she comes me down. Thank you. Um, he's very open-minded and uh, I love that he's very humble especially in front of God. He's so stubborn in social media and everything but when? I think Stadebon is another statement. I really take on battles, eh? political battles, eh? yeah. regardless eh? of, of even the most feared uh, dictators in the region. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I send punches. Okay, yeah, but uh, I love that you're humble before God. Edgar taught me how to read the Bible. Yeah. Um, and then he's so kind you know he gives himself out to everyone sometimes i just have to say no we we cannot we, ca we can't do that you know and he does it with humility with passion and i love that he's smart yeah oh well <laughs> somebody finally says i'm smart <laughs> people on facebook think i'm the I'm the biggest dwanzi for, for my political opinions, but well, oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, you, you're very mm -hmm. smart, you're intelligent, you're calm, you, 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 you know how to, you know, you think through things. Me, maybe because of my age as well, I, when I think of something, I want to immediately do it. Edgar takes his time, he thinks through things, and you're very supportive, so... Those are the things I love about you. Some of the things I love, yeah. We would say it's 14th of, 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 of December. 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 Yeah. It was a Friday. Yeah. We, we weathered at a private residence again of a, of a very, very dear friend of mine called General Henry Tumkunde, <laughs> who is now offering himself for president. So we had this uh, wedding at, at his residence. He was, yeah. was good enough was graceful enough to offer us his residence which we used exclusively yeah. to host our guests for an entire day. Yeah, that's right. But talking of seasons, it was approaching Christmas, mm -hmm. family was all around, yeah. people from the diaspora. It was an it was exciting good. period for us and the yeah. children on holiday. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had so much of plants and nature nature so nature yeah nature and uh, wood and you know because we both love nature we we love plants we love gardening <laughs> we we created the garden <laughs> yeah we have a garden yeah. down there so um it's something that you know we both love so it was easy and green is my favorite color <laughs> Yeah, I've so. done I've done gardening ever since I was a child. Eh? Yeah, uh, we, we we took turns at going at the farm, our family farm in Fortpoto, where we grow tea mm. and coffee. Now tea is tea is a very beautiful 
very very beautiful crop we should give it is really really the scenic beauty panoramic beauty of tea yeah? is very appealing and it did inspire well the sure it did. the theme of <laughs> it did did did, 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 did. Yeah. yeah so we we were inspired by nature we love nature and green is we used so much of green and some white and uh, we didn't do so much of deco because the place was it was already wooded so we, we didn't need to do so much deco that 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 was the inspiration we did the introduction in the morning uh, from from 10 to midday and then we gave a break like for one hour to everyone and then we did the church as well at the same venue and uh, uh, from was it from uh, from two to three yeah from two to three and then we had a, co had a cocktail we had a cocktail which was like my favorite part of the wedding because uh, we me and edgar we really were looking forward to that edgar had so many friends coming from burundi south, south africa, africa u.s i had my relatives from denmark we had friends from rwanda everywhere and these people were taken long without seeing them. So that part was for us to greet people, take pictures with them, like personally go there and hug them. Yeah, and with some jazz and cocktail. It was like my favorite part of our wedding. And with Jeff shouting, Bride, <laughs> take a picture. So, yeah, so we, we thought of uh, having everything at at once because because of family yeah, we thought of people from different or people from different countries different places and it was december so we thought if instead of having it separately like on maybe friday and saturday and you know taking two days of uh, someone who has for example like a business I remember my uncle from Fort Porto called and said, please do not do these things where people take two days. I have a business to run. So we, we told him we are doing everything on a Friday. In the morning we had, I think, 70 guests, 40 from my side, 30 from his side. And in the afternoon, we planned for 200 guests. I, but I think we got like 300. Yeah, so time for, it was uh, saving, we wanted to save time. We wanted to have something intimate and small. Um, and of course, we wanted also to save money. Yeah, not from one hotel. And I wanted a place that, that is not common. I wanted a place that is not common and a place that I could transform into everything that we wanted, which was perfect. One, well, me from my side, uh, is simplicity. I mean, yeah. There's no need to exaggerate. You, you just need, uh, what, what's the word? You have to be innovative. Eh? You creative. can be no, creative, creative. The word is creative. You have to be creative. You can, you can do so much with so little. We, we didn't have much resources. Yeah. But uh, you shall recall, we really had a beautiful. And how did we do? Just being creative, right? Eh? Yeah. You have a theme in your mind, and we did go for. I mean, the kind of decorators, the top brands you hear in town, and what have you. Actually, I think we used the startup. Eh? Yeah. That yeah. was. This was the first wedding they were decorating. Yeah. No, no, no. It wasn't the first. But it, uh, they, they were just starting up. But I liked them because they were young and they were willing to do crazy things. Like, for example, this thing from, was from our wedding. So uh, it, they were willing to do all my crazy ideas, his crazy ideas, which, which was nice. And when you work with young people, like, even when I met you, Jeff, I, was, I had met, like, maybe... 10 photographers and I didn't like the things. People want to give you specific things that everyone else does. But 
we wanted something special. Like, oh, talking of photography, when I met Jeff eh. for dinner, me it didn't even matter whether he was going to do quality work or what. Oh my God. But I was convinced he's a creative person and I mean, yeah, it's I, very rare to come across people in Jeff's age group with, uh, with ideas yeah. of, of, his, of his kind. Yeah. And uh, I do recall we were supposed to have 30 minutes, but I think we had five or six hours that evening. Oh left. my god, we, we left like uh, I think at around 9 pm. No, it was towards 11. 11 pm. <laughs> it was towards 11 pm. Yeah. yeah. He's, he, it's, it's good to, you know, to be willing to, to take on challenges, which is something you have, which is nice. Uh, COVID-19 COVID has taught me lots of things, eh? that one, I would certainly have fewer guests, <laughs> meaning the, the, the cost would be much lower. Yeah. Uh, two, uh, I don't know whether I would really have it in Uganda. Uh -huh. Why? Eh? I don't think I would really have it in Uganda. I would Why? do it elsewhere. Why would you do that? Eh? Why would you do that? To save on costs. Okay. Uh, maybe on a boat. We go save of us on a boat, it cruises, docks, we are finished. Yeah. Trade. I and I really encourage young people not to uh, to be too fanciful about about occasions. Eh? At the end of the day it's about the two of you. Mm. When they are dead, it's the two of you to meet them. When I mean, people come, drink, and go, and uh, after the vows, there's, there's a lot more than, than. So I, I would really encourage people who intend to marry, mm. unless you really have abundant resources, <laughs> but not to put, not to spare any expense yeah. in, in, in trying to, 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 to put please. things together, to please an outside world. It's up, yeah. it's up to you. Actually, I'm of the opinion if you can find good cloth, clothing, yeah, and doesn't have to be a traditional suit, but it's something that you feel simple wear and have a few friends. That was that uh, was my plan. Yeah, and good cocktails and uh, find a priest who can put you together, say your vows, and or go and sign at, uh, at a uh, for civil marriage and you're done. I've I've seen. I've seen a number of world leaders who have done that. Uh, the, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, eh? Imran Khan, eh? had a simple civil wedding in, in, in London. Eh? He was a top cricketer. He was top cricketer, I mean, highly valued player in, in cricket. Uh, Mandela's marriage to Grasser. Michelle was, was a simple, simple faction, eh? mm -hmm. celebrated by Bishop Desmond Tutu. I mean, we are talking of legends here, guys. <laughs> I'm certainly nowhere near a legend, <laughs> uh, but I hope to be one by the time I meet my creator, inshallah. <laughs> but, uh, well, 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 uh, there's no need to fuss a lot about these things. If you feel ready, just do it. Just do it. I think what I would do different, almost same as Edgar, which actually um, was like my original plan, to just have me and him go somewhere, uh, wed, you know, a, a, a wed, just me and him and maybe witnesses, and then go to some charity, and you know, do some charity on, on share our a cake with a with, with I, I thought we would we'll do it with the deaf children that I work with sometimes. So, but then family came and I said, "You're not doing that. <laughs> You're not doing that." We also want, you know, a wedding. This is your first wedding. I didn't want to wear a gown in the first place. I. Mm, uh, I had brought my tomboy tendencies 
to the wedding. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't want to wear a gown. I just wanted to wear a short, nice dress, which is not costly. And I had like three of my aunties calling, you're wearing a gown. This is a one-time thing. You're making a gown. So, yeah. Also, I think one of the things also I realized is that weddings are not, mostly are not really, okay, it's about the two people, but there's a lot of family involved also in the background. My main point, I just told you I didn't even want to wear a gown. Um, I wanted comfort, honestly. I just wanted comfort, yeah. And I knew that we are doing two functions on the same day. We did the traditional wedding in the morning and the wedding in the afternoon. So I knew I needed something that I'll feel comfortable with. Yeah, Edgar is very big on music. Eh? Yeah, he's so big on music that if I'm going to drive his car, when I start, I first reduce the volume <laughs> because it is boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and in the morning, when you enter this house, you, you get confused whether there's a DJ in this house. Well, he has music is very therapeutic for me. Right? He has Congolese, um, Bongo Flav, Suku, Suku, South African music. What do you call the South African music? <laughs> then he has. It's called he has baby face, then what, then what, then what. So then I also like my Afro jazz. Eh? Yeah. I listen to Afro jazz when, when sad, when bitter, yeah. when hyper. I also listen to Afro jazz. So it's, uh, it's music that appeals to me. And uh, in particular, like Huma Sekela, or like uh, Emilia Makeda, Jimmy Dudu, Olivier and Tukunduzi, uh, that kind of music, really. And then uh, my all-time favorite, unfortunately, he passed on during uh, the COVID period, eh? Manu Dibango, the age of 88, my ringback tune mm -hmm. oh, on my phone, uh, it's actually Liberté African, mm -hmm. Lib Liberate Africa, uh, it's the, the rendition is of Manu Dibango, dead at the age of 88 of COVID. In, the Tepo in France, but the original was done by a certain Franklin Bukaka from Central African Republic. And I have a special relationship with Central African Republic. They are the first family, our friends, our friends, and we interact a lot. Unfortunately, they missed my wedding. Yeah. But uh, I hope they'll attend our children's weddings. <laughs> when when I think of our marriage, I think of uh, friendship. And I, uh, well, my part is it's more of like a movie script. <laughs> mm. It's a uh, it's a movie script. Yeah. Only that a movie script waiting to be shot in. In the appropriate setting <laughs> is what I describe it as. We 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 we're supposedly different. Mm -hmm. um, so the differences that bring us together. I like Ajunga. <laughs> I, you don't like. You love. I I you I, love Ajunga. <laughs> I never walk away from a good argument, but I've learned to do so with Katia. If <laughs> you, you know, winning an argument. <laughs> with, with Does the, that with, make me very agitated? With a spouse. No, no, no. I, I just say you're mean. argumentative, but you fight back yeah. in an argument. And uh, I realize. I don't keep my opinion. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can't win an argument against a spouse. <laughs> Even when you win, you're actually the loser. So. Uh, you know, Jeff, you, you're taking notes. <laughs> there are things you learn in life. And, uh, uh, I mean, sometimes <laughs> losing the argument is actually winning an argument against your spouse. Because uh, they are rational beings. Eh? 
when time there comes a time when they realize that it was not even worth it that they were pursuing. But I think also that's something you build with time. We we've learned we've learned uh, how to communicate to each other within the five years. So I think it's something people learn with time. <laughs> but they think he's an angel. Yeah. He he doesn't make mistakes. My especially my family thinks that guy's an angel. I should tell them to follow him on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, but uh, apart from thinking him as someone who is so good, which he is, is they think he's smart, he's kind. Oh, so they think me smart. That's yeah, to other people now. <laughs> no, to the extent <laughs> that my father, when we visit, yeah, it's like he's securing a chair for Edgar, you know. He's, they, Edgar is sitting here, no one sees him. So he, he's, uh, he was a professor, he's retired now. So they have very deep talks about history, geography, the region and everything. So they like him so much. And I like, uh, you know, social anthropology. Eh? Mm. Uh, it's a subject I, I'm studying. It intrigues me because it has helped me understand why certain groups of people have developed certain cultural attitudes. And uh, I find him with depth mm. of analysis in that, yeah, in that so aspect. Much. So we, and he's a good historian, so we, yeah. we always talk endlessly. And uh, a visit that is supposed to take three hours takes up to six eight hours also he he taught my brother and sister oh yes i did, yeah. I did teach them at university so you can see they are biased <laughs> um uh, I, I don't keep too many close friends eh? i have very few and uh, uh my friends who are my age mates are obviously older than Katia, a lot older than Katia. And uh, for my family, my, so my friends, if they have opinions, they really kept them to themselves. Eh? But they think, well, she's pretty, she's, uh, she, she's pretty, she's elegant. Uh, as for my family, uh, they, 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 they think she's, which she is anyway, she's she the anchor in my life uh, because I had a bit of turbulence eh, in my uh, in my in, in the past. Uh, many things didn't go my way. I had to I had to change uh, direction as as a university teacher, lecturer, hoping to become a professor. I had to leave that. And, uh, some things didn't add up, and uh, I was uh, I was downcast. So with with Katia in my life, I don't know whether some of these uh, objectives would apply to me, but uh, I think they see me more of a, a comeback kid, and uh, they attribute it to Katia. I'm calling myself a comeback kid. I'm obviously not a kid, <laughs> but certainly comeback I have. <laughs> um, it's all, we owe it to that here. Oh, that's sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there is no one size fits all eh? mm -hmm. approach to these things. Yeah. What makes one marriage tick is not what makes another marriage tick. Eh? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I, 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 I like good food. Eh? Uh, Katia really is a great cook. Eh? Uh, really great cook. And she can, she really prepares, uh, she can prepare a very healthy meal with a very 
very little of the destructive stuff that we tend to find in good foods. Eh? The oils, the carbs, the, 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 the what else are we learning of late? You know, gluten, mm. glut, gl gluten-free. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, what I would encourage, there is a there is a prominent psychologist eh, called Chris Hart in the Republic of Kenya. Chris Hart. Yes, Chris Hart. He runs a column on uh, on relationships in the in the in the in the in the Sunday Sunday Nation. Mm. Uh, he he as well has a blog. I think Nyumba Yangu. Mm. Very very great advice he gives. In, uh, in, 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 in in that column in, in his uh, in his in his on his blog eh? and I read it for a while eh? from the time I was in my in, in, in my in my when I was downcast I read it intensively and uh, I must I must uh, confess, I I sought I sought the services of of of, of uh, a shrink, <laughs> uh, an expert uh, psychologist on, on on these matters, and uh, believe me, invaluable advice, invaluable advice. The 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 the, the shrink. Can tell you whether you're incompatible or not. All you know, relationships have their their their, their fault lines. Eh? They, they they advise on, on how to how to handle pressures, how to handle conflict, eh? how to handle misunderstandings. So the advice I would give to persons out there who are ready in relationships. Who, are, who intend to marry or who are already married is uh, go, go to the professionals. Frankly, mm. uh, it's, they, they've taken a while to study the the, the advice they give. Uh, the advice they give, and, and, and it's very critical. It's very critical. Yeah, <coughs> I support what he has said, but I think. Uh, like Edgar said, I think what works for one person that might not work for the other. For example, when, I was, when we were getting married, I had like several people giving me advice. Do this, don't do this. Do this, don't do this. Also, I have a problem with that because they don't teach the man. They only do on the side of the woman, which is wrong. Yeah, No, I'm not being a feminist. Uh, I just think also the men need to be groomed in a certain way. And like Edgar said, we, we, we still do actually, we still consult our counsellor, like we have a counsellor. Yeah, because then it, it helps you understand your partner better, but also understand yourself, yourself as a person. And for you to make someone else happy, you have to be able to make yourself happy, understand yourself, have inner happiness, you know. Basically, you have to be like a hundred percent to also, you know, complete someone else. All, both of you have to be a hundred percent. I don't believe someone should be like 50 percent and then 50 percent and then you make a hundred. I prefer that's that's also why I think that uh, for for a lady to to be married or to to commit to someone, they should be able to support themselves. Um, I don't specifically mean financially. It is better also if you can support yourself financially and you're independent. Uh, but being able to know yourself and you know how can i say it honey what's the english word that he went to 
Kororo schools. What's the English word? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, being able to know yourself and then even when you're happy. Self awareness. Self self awareness. Just like that. Self awareness and then you be able to make someone else happy. Not expecting the other person to make you happy all the time. Yeah. Oh we we also had the uh, very amazing uh, service providers, the ones that did our deco. Um, we had two decorators, a classic, that is Amon, the uh, Amon Bazira. The, he's, he's, he's perfect, he's good. He's willing to take on a challenge and he's creative. He's, he, he, he listens, he wants to, you know, to do new things, which is a great thing. And uh, then the lady who did our traditional deco, uh, she's called Jackie. She, she has, she's from Jakaranda. There, she's also out of this world. She's great. And um, we had actually very few service providers. And then the food, the venue basically was, was uh, like Edgar said, we, we were grateful to, to the general. We were very, very grateful. And then to to the to Ted, Ted, <laughs> Ted, Ted Sempe, Ted Sempe, Edgar's best man. That and then Katia, Katia, yeah, Kashubama. Katia Kashubama also did. She outdid herself. Our friends, our family, patients, yeah, you know. Solomon, Solomon, yeah. They we had we had a very supportive group of people. And then we had some photographer. Makura photos. Makura photos. Some guy. Makura pictures. Makura pictures. What is the difference between photo <laughs> and pictures? <laughs> yeah. Branding. Branding. <laughs> yeah. No, but Jeff, you actually <laughs> did a great job. Yeah, you did a great job. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen to what I think is an amazing story yeah. of, of, of our life. Uh, keep it Makula Pictures. Subscribe, like, like, share, post this yeah. channel. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. <laughs>